Man, one of those gusts last night, a stick landed on my tent. I thought a tree was coming down. I thought, uh oh, this is it. Camped in the wrong spot. I am so thankful for a Hilleberg tent when it's this windy. They're so good in the wind. I can't imagine what it's like 2,400 feet up the mountain. 50, 60, like it was the first day. Yeah. I've done elk hunts where I've had a day or two of wind, but this looks like we got three days now. And the forecast I just looked at says tomorrow's the same. The upside, Bill and I were just talking, was maybe that would keep those ones we bedded last night in that little bowl. Or, you know. so. I'm like, well, that's the most protected spot they could be in, in a wind like this. Maybe. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry about that. You see some elk down here yesterday. Yeah. Sorry about that, man. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> what that? Did you get hit? No. Well, last night we saw a bull come in bed in this meadow. All night the wind just howled. I mean, just screamed. So what I thought was, in this protected canyon, that the elk would stay in here. Well, there's a road up above the canyon. We shimmy down. All of a sudden, rocks start rolling down here past us. And then we hear some bugle from the road. I walked up there and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> They're rolling rocks down this canyon, seeing if they can get the elk to move. And then they're up there talking. And so our hope was that as hard as the wind blew all night, that in this protected canyon they'd be here. So we came from the downwind side, side held up this canyon a little way. And then there's just over the other side of that ridge, there's another road. But there were elk in here, so I thought they'd stay here tonight. That is the first time I've ever had rocks rolled down a canyon on me. I mean, they were coming. And then they let out some bugles right from a main highway, it's like, you don't think elk are going to know that that's a human. Here we go, plan 33 or whatever. Shaded dark timber, right? There's a little V down here. Yeah. The shaded dark timber at the bottom of the V, they're right on the top ledge of that dark timber. I did this bike.
you see a ball? I didn't see a ball, no. Another raghorn. Seven cows and a raghorn. He's ever bit of a five point. I'm going around the other side. Well, we'll make note of that. A nice five point just went through that saddle right there with a group of cows he was bugling. We got an elk located up there. We're gonna go put the drop on him here. You can see them all standing over there in those trees. But you know what that means? The next two days, we're going down in the canyon. Just climbing up to these knob stuff. Ain't working out. What's going on? There's a... Well, I haven't seen it yet, but these guys have seen a cow and they say a bull. A bull. Must be behind that spruce tree. Coming, they're coming in. Die. I think they're gonna come across this hillside through this timber right here. Not right behind those dead trees. shot. That's bad luck. We were up there. We saw a bull in the spotting scope when these elk came out on the edge. You know, he heard a shot. And the elk are moving towards us, but I think the bull is down. So that's how it goes sometimes, folks. This was really unlucky. There was a bull in that group of cows. And those guys, I think, saw him and got a shot at him, which is good for them, but not good for us. So stay tuned, folks. We got two more days left. I don't know how many of those days it'll take us to kill an elk, but we're gonna give her the best we got. Before we're charging way back up the mountain again today. I think we're ahead of everybody. A bunch of trucks pulled up to the trailhead when we got there and we just grabbed our stuff and boogied. So the wind has died down right now. I hope it stays this way. Head back here. See what we can see. Be like the bear that went over the mountain, right? To see what he could see. You all right with that, Ty? Yep. Uh, yep. Ty, yep, Newman. Yep. You that, are you that agreeable with your wife? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all there.
trapped him right there. Holy cow, Ty. <laughs> Good shoot, <Andy. laughs> I can't tell how big he is. I think he's a five. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> he's dead as disco, man. <laughs> Oh, man. This is the same meadow where we had that yeah. chaotic event the first morning. Yeah. Talking to my wife last night, and she said, uh, Well, I haven't been saying good luck because I didn't want to jinx you. And I was like, I don't think that's a thing. And she's like, Oh, okay. Well, good luck then. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you needed. Well, Ty, your New Mexico elk hunt is now down to just the hard work. Yeah. And the drive home. Yeah. And a bunch of meat to process when you get there. Were you inclined to let him go? No. No, I didn't. I, didn't, I wasn't either, but I, was, I wasn't going to say. I just said, I can see branch antlers on him. And the rest was up to you. Yeah. I'm you, sure. All the different little hiccups this week there was yeah. nothing that i was letting go at all well now I, the fun part you've been doing all this cooking i told you when you won this i get to do the gutting and gilling right yeah. you can hold the leg or whatever but i'm doing the gutting and gilling okay. you you okay with that yeah yeah you said it was a stipulation before i even got here. yeah so. it was it was a requirement that you didn't realize it but that form you signed said randy gets to do the gutting and gilling It is, what time, two in the afternoon? Something like that? 2.30. 2.30. And here's a bull standing in the hot sun at 70 yards. I think he's not doing well. I've never seen a bull be that dumb. Well, Ty, you got your first elk today. Yeah. You earned it. Well, yeah, I guess. You did. No, you put up with three days of rotten wind and we had to leave our preferred hunting spot to come down to get out of the wind or try. And all we ran into is tons of hunters. I mean, last night, what did you think when that guy shot that bull out from underneath you? I was a, I was a little disappointed, but, you know, <laughs> ha happy for him. Good for him, right? Right, yeah. But I hope when it's all said and done, you feel that it was worth the effort. Or, oh, yeah. I do. This was awesome. Thank you, Randy. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. I appreciate it. This oh. is great. I, uh, I had a blast. I, Me and too. I, I was telling Dale, 90% of the success we have is attitude, and that's why you had success. You never were down and out. I mean, you had so many reasons to be sour or bitter or disappointed or whatever. And you're just like, yep, let's go. Yep. 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 Let's go. <laughs> that makes it fun. Yeah. Makes it a ton of fun for us, and I'm glad it turned well, out. Well, I was having a ton of fun. It's easy to stay positive when it's fun. Hopefully, folks, you're paying attention because in November and December, 
of 2020. We're going to be doing another sweepstakes with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Go to rmef.org and check out. Or if you follow our platforms, you'll see all kinds of news about the fact that we got a sweepstakes going. And you could be Ty next year. Could okay? be, yeah. Could be. Enter. It's worth it. Somebody, Somebody wins these things. Somebody does. He, he's living proof right here. And he yeah. shot an elk. And I shot an elk. Cool. Thanks so much, Ty. Thank you. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. We'll stay in touch, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll, get, I'll give you all my elk hunting advice for free because it's not worth anything. <laughs> I don't know. I learned a lot. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks.